Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Anime King 2 and today I'm going to be giving you part 6 of What If Naruto Rewrote the Past Remember to get this one to 100 likes as usual Share this to all of your friends in your social media platform And also guys Stay tuned for the rest of the tips coming your way over an Anime King and over an Anime King 3 if you're new, yes, you heard that correctly. You have not mistaken I indeed have three channels, Anime King, Anime King 2, Anime King 3, which I post what if on every single day for you guys to enjoy. So go ahead and click that red subscribe button and become a part of the Anime King family. And thank you for all of your help and support. Remember to comment down below and tell me if you're new. I'll be playing talking back to all of you. So yeah, without further ado, what is we begin this new episode start? The intro. So the last time we left off, Kagamai sat down with Naruto as he spoke to him about his daughter. As Naruto was getting a gif of what the man was saying, it turned out that Naruto was the one that Mikato liked. But Naruto's mind was focused on other things. If this happened, well this will change a lot in the time and you would not know and predict many more things because a lot would happen and a lot would change for the future. For one thing, if they were to have kids, it won't be the same Itachi or Sasuke. And if Itachi didn't commit the Uchiha massacre, well, it could be another Uchiha or altogether it would change. So Nurt did not know. But Mikato was really unhappy with the marriage between her and Fugaku. And the only way to break it was, well there was a system that take place at the end of the week after animations. To test their chakra to see if they had been with anyone else, any other trace of chakra in their system. As Kagamai had got a mission for Naruto and his daughter to take care of some rogue ninjas. So after that, the both of them made their way there. It was quite awkward because she found out that her father talked to Naruto but her father refused to tell her about what as they finally talked when they got to the hotel. They start to get to know each other better and talk just talking and talking and talking as she was rather scared at first considering that she's never done anything like this before or used to it at all but Naruto was calm and he was gentle as the both of them talk he didn't want to rush her or rush himself into anything after which they head back to Kanoha immediately Naruto was summoned to the office as he spoke to Harrison for a while before, he went to his office as Minato came, saying that something happened and Mikato was quite distraught, as he was wondering if it was Naruto. The both of them went on to find the girls, as Kushina had taken her to somewhere. As Naruto was able to find Kushina like a beacon, concerned that she possessed the Nine Tails. She was shocked when he found her, she couldn't understand how did he find her. But Naruto told her that she had a different sense of chakra. As he didn't know what was going on as he asked Mikato if she was okay. She told him that it was off as she had spoken. To Fukaku and the elders there. But it seems like something happened but Naruto was able to cheer her up by acting all goofy. It was then that Kushina and Minato saw. As they couldn't believe it. They were upon them like a red and yellow flash. As they wanted to know what the hell was going on with the both of them together. So yeah guys, it was basically as we left off you guys again. Switch across the place, check off yourself. Oh, this will begin this new episode. Naruto, help me broke the contract I was in, said Mikato. Explaining to her friend. Kushina stepped back with a hand over her mouth as she gasped. As Minato continued, the investigation. How did that happen? I mean, I knew that you weren't into contracts and all that, but 
I didn't think a Uchiha contract could be broken. Mikato shook her head. There are ways that it can be broken, but most of them revolve around death or something bad happening. The easiest way was for me to have someone chakra residue in my own system. When I went to place my chakra at a seal, if it was an enemy chakra that would be one thing, but considering that it is a chakra of a leaf ninja who is not a medic, as Mikato voice trail off, not finishing a sentence, Minato's eyes widened immensely. Kushina on the other hand, she didn't seem to understand. Apparently, Mikato was used to explaining things to her friend of this manner. It means that we had to do a lot of kissing so his chakra could be absorbing to mine. Apparently, he has very strong chakra because of reading make it seems like we had, um, well, his chakra has completely melted with mine, pretty much over 90% of my body. She turned a curious eye to the blonde, who merely grinned and shrugged. Kushna was standing there, her eyes turned starry as she looked at both of them. Minato was smiling. Sorry, said Naruto. It must have made it awkward for you. It was difficult for a little while. Fukaku, as her tone got a bit down, said some things I did not appreciate. I almost attacked him before my father stopped me and sent me to Kushina. He said he would take care of things. Naruto was about to say something but she grabbed his hand. We can talk about it later. I don't want to dwell on you right now. I just want to spend time with my friends. Well, we can do that. Right guys? As Kushna reached and grabbed Mikoto's hand, questions after questions as she wanted to know details. How did they even got together? As Minato moved closely to Naruto. You don't know that I've known Mikoto since I was 9, right? As Naruto nodded. She's like a sister to me in every way except for blood. I don't know what is going on, but if you hurt her. Minato was not trying to look menacing, but his voice conveyed enough. Before Naruto could even say anything, Mikato's voice got in. While I can appreciate it, I can handle myself, Minato. If there's anyone I'd rather you beat up, it will be Fukaku. Kushina rolled up her sleeves, pointing in the right direction, she said. Mikato rolled her eyes. None of us will be doing anything, she said. My father will be handling it. If necessary, I will think of a suitable revenge later. Kushina didn't look happy at that, as she wanted to get revenge for her friend. But she did grudgingly nod. Minato on the other hand simply looked relief that Kushina would go on a rampage. Now, I'm sorry I interrupted the both of you earlier. You can go back doing what you were doing. Thank you for coming with me, Kushina, even if we didn't talk for too long. Kushina smiled but concern took over. Are you sure that you're going to be okay? I'm sure Minato wouldn't mind if you came to dinner with us tonight. It's fine, thank you. I need to talk to Naruto about a few things anyway. Fine, fine, said Kushina. I know when I'm not needed. But I will be hunting you down for details tomorrow. You can count on that. Mikato simply nodded as she offered Kushina a smile. As Kushina bid them farewell, as she grabbed Minato's hand and started to drag him away. As he waved goodbye to them as he tried to keep pace with Kushina. Once they were gone, Naruto spoke. So, do you want to talk about it? Or, do you rather get dinner? He said. We should probably talk first, so this way, I can stop you from jumping over a table, she said. That bad, huh? said Naruto. She squeezed his hand a bit as she was still holding on to it. Honestly, it wasn't that bad in the beginning. It was the end, she said. Fukaku was not surprised I broke the contract, which made me sad. He was just interested for my position in the way it seems. I gather that many of the others in the room were thinking the same thing. I'm guessing that your council wasn't that pleased, said Naruto. She snorted. I would hardly call them a council. They're more like a bunch of old men who have nothing better to do with their entire life. But no, they're not pleased. Especially since my father did something over 20 years ago when he wanted to marry my mother. The grocery lady, right? You mentioned her, said Naruto. Yeah, the grocery lady, she said with a chuckle. Thanks to that, most of them immediately blamed my father for it, thinking that it's starting up a precedent. As Naruto nodded as he figured that she just wanted to vent about it. As it seemed to work quite well as she came rather closer to him. Fukaku was the first one to leave. As he passed by me, he said, that he felt ashamed for our clan, that the ear had to so desperately pour herself out to one of the Hokage stooge. Mikato was close enough to him and not to mention her forearms were in his and her other one, wrapped around him rather tight. As she suspected that this might happen, as Naruto tried to move, but if he did, she would be coming along with him. As she was able to calm him down, she looked at him strangely. Are you sure you don't have the shotgun already? she asked. Huh? Why? he said. 
Your eyes flashed right there for a moment. Nurta closed his eyes as he fully calmed down. It's one of my special abilities. I'll tell you soon, I promise he said. She didn't look too happy at first but she nodded. But she still held on to his arm and not release him at all. I'm guessing that you are planning to do something for Gaku, she said. Yes, he said. Don't. My father and the advisors will take care of him for saying what he should not. I don't like it, said Naruto the throne. But if that is what you want, it is. But thank you for coming to my defense, though. As Naruto anger started to subside, but it was still there. His stomach grumbled because she looked towards it. Sorry, he said. I was in my office all day. She simply smiled. Want to get something to eat, she said. Sounds good, said Naruto. Hey, I knew that Kushina might have already dragged you there before. But there's this up and coming stand that serve ramen that is just to die for. And with that, they move off. Flashback to the past. Excuse me, Commander General, do you have a moment? Naruto looked up from the decks as he was relieved for the distraction. There was a Mizukagi standing at the flap of his tent. Of course, Mizukagi sama, come in, he said. She stepped inside as she closed the flap. She went through a brief hand sign to activate the privacy seals. The seals were known between the Kagis and the Jonin's commander when they had to make some tough decisions. Unfortunately, they were the only two combat Kagis remaining since the others were either dead, crippled or missing. Or alone no Naruto. Since it's just the two of us, I think, we know and respect each other enough so that we can use our name now. One of the blonde's eyebrow race, but he decided to go along with it. There was no reason to refuse. If that is what you desire, me, he said. As he leaned back in his chair, he waited for her to use his name and acknowledge him. To tell him what she wanted to say, but she was looking off into space. With this dreamy look on her face, he wasn't sure what was going on as he cleared his throat. When that didn't work, he shrugged. As he went back to checking assignments, figuring that she would talk when she was ready. It was nearly a full minute later when he heard her move. As he saw her hands resting on his decks. Upon looking up, Naruto paused for a moment. She was leaning on his decks, and her cleavage was right at his eye level. Knowing better than to stare, he looked up as he paused at the look on her face. A rather flirtatious look, Naruto, she said. Her voice was so smooth, it was just rolling off her tongue. There are many things I desire, and hearing my name spoken by you is a simple one that you have now fulfilled. I have another desire, however, and that is to go back to the mess, as I've been hearing some rumors. That I feel that needs my attention. The blonde frowned at that, trying to keep his face impassive as he leaned back in his chair. If she went, that would pretty much leave him as the one. Last remaining Kagi. The right Kagi was still around. To a certain degree, but since he had been crippled, he had went back to the cloud a few weeks ago. He was gathering as much intelligence as possible. And fortifying his village defenses. As the day dragged on though, the ability to gather more information dwindled. As more people succumbed to the Red Moon, not to mention a report from Kumo was nearly two weeks overdue. How long do you think you will be gone? He asked. As long as necessary, that was a response. As Naruto couldn't help but sigh, that means I'll never see you again. Yes, that is something I had considered. I feel I should give you at least the opportunity to try and convince me out of leaving if you feel it's necessary. As Naruto let his head tilt forward as he closed his eyes. He couldn't think of any reason to keep her here. It was already a war of attrition. Sometimes, they only felt like they were delaying. The inevitable. Toby had them outnumbered. 100 to 1 already. And it was only gonna get worse. The only real advantage was, they can think for themselves. And Toby's pawns could only be controlled by him. And he could only control so much at once. All attempts of tracking Toby down, or destroying the obelisk, have been fruitless. They were now pushing to find some ways of gaining another advantage. They recently got a tip from Tishikage, and that was their best bet. The hardest thing now was getting to the remains of Uzu. As Naruto leaned back, as he folded his arms at me, had leaned up. Well, he said, it would be a shame to lose one of the best and most beautiful Kunoichiya we have. Not to mention near the Misakage. But I understand where you're coming from. If we were far from Konoha and I heard negative rumors, I would want to check them out as well. Good luck. Hopefully. We meet again, he said. Immediately her posture went rigid. As she lifted her head up. As he could no longer see her eyes. Did... 
Did you... Did you mean what you said, she said. As Newt looked at her. Honesty would be the best approach. Yes, I wouldn't have if I didn't mean to, he said. I'm really beautiful, she said. As Newt wondered if she saw herself. Because anyone who didn't think so must be crazy or just sticking the head. Her face came back down as she smiled. As she let out a small, sweet laugh. You're the first real man to tell me that to my face. Would you believe that, she said. He did not. Or at least he didn't know what she meant by real man. You gotta be kidding, he said. No, she said. I'm not. I overheard comment that man make that they think I couldn't hear. And after I threatened to kill them, they stopped completely. Well, he could understand. No, no, powerful she was. Threatening someone to death would definitely keep them away. Well, with how powerful you are, they must have gotten scared away, said Naruto. She nodded as she walked backwards. He thought that she was about to leave, but she started to pace. In the room, she was walking back in front. As Naruto watched her for a moment, before returning back to his work. As she stopped, as she placed her hand on his desk, he looked up. She was so close. As he leaned back a bit, Naruto, me, he said. As he didn't know what was going on, as she was looking down. I've never thought about um, this before. Do you want us? She said. As Naruto mind was going a mile a minute, he had never seen her act like how she was acting now. He had an idea about what she was acting. But he better be sure. Do I want to? What? He said. Her face snapped up. Idiot, she said. Do I have to spell it out for you? As Naruto bit back a chuckle. But the mirth must have shown in his face because she scowled. But it was rather cute. He wasn't the oblivious teenager. He used to be. War could make a person mature rather quickly. And the fact that he was put in charge only sped it up even more. Relationships were something that he was never really good at. But in war it never really mattered. Especially not when Kunoichis started to come to him. Because they were curious how powerful he really was. Needless to say he lost the rest of his innocence when he risked through a rather timid Kunoichi on his hand. When she was almost killed by her squad mate that was placed under the red moon in mission. And let's just say she wasn't timid at all as she thanked him rather thoroughly that night. As he finally spoke, no, I have a rather vivid imagination. Would you like to hear what I'm imagining right now? Oh is that so she said as she started to crawl on the decks towards them. As she moved forward, his chair was already unbalanced so the both of them fell. But that wasn't a problem as her lips made contact with his. It was a good thing that she activated the privacy seal before she entered the tent because they were definitely going to need it. In the flashback, Naruto Sama, here are the files that you requested. As Naruto turned towards the assistant, that was fast, Mason, he said. As the teenager gave her boss a smile, as Naruto looked down towards the papers, there were a dispute between two of the lesser known clans that he was trying to sort out. Well, you did ask me to file everything regarding the new clans. I just had to remember where I put them. As Nurt gave her back a small smile. She had been hovering around him ever since he returned back from the mission with Mikoto. Well, she was a good assistant. He hadn't heard any rumors around the village about him and Mikoto yet. Well, none that he was aware of. As he focused back on the papers. Doing this was a real nightmare, but he had brought the clans in Konoha in the first place. But this was still a logistical nightmare though. Lately he found himself missing his youth. When he didn't have to worry about all this paperwork. But now everyone wanted attention. Well he was really appreciative of the Terumi clan. As they were the biggest clan they were working as some kind of umbrella. Where he can funnel and pass some of his work onto. The other clans that came to Konoha spoke to the Terumi clan. And if the Terumi clan could not start it out. They spoke to Naruto. But this zoning issue was too big for Terumi clan to resolve. If Naruto did not nip it in the butt right now, it would be pushed into the Kanoha Council and that would just make it worse. Kanoha General Council was exactly what he sounded like. A general council of clans that handle the day to day issues of the village. Hiruzen was just one man and he couldn't handle the entire village by himself. There was many other work that goes into it. The military was taken care of by the Anbu commander and the head of torture and interrogation and the Jonin commander and some elite Jonins 
the civilians were watched over by the general council as that section handled every request from the civilian sector. But even with that, the Hokage had final say when he wrote everything, the civilians, the shinobis, everything. While Nurk did not remember most of the lessons from the academy, once he was given the title, Shikaku had managed to beat that knowledge into his mind. Everything about the fire daimyo, about the politics, he knew it all. So with that he made his way towards where the construction was going on. The two clan representatives were still there, and they were still bickering. But one thing he didn't really care about, as these two were arguing what was good for their clan. They had no say in the matter, they were not the leaders. Or they didn't have the authority. They were the ones that report back to their leaders. But they were the ones that loved to argue. Luckily, there were some ways to stop it, once the higher heads got involved. For the last time, it was already decided before. We found out what our bond should be. It is not fair for you to come and change it now. As that may be, it would say that it would change if it was necessary for the population requirements. You do know that our clan members outnumber yours by a large population, right? That is only when you include those members that serve your own clan. When you include your legitimate clan alone, we have more members than you. As Nurta stood there as their voice started to zone out in the back of his mind, the poor leader of the construction was leaning against the rock wall there, as there was many blueprints and plans on a large table. The two clans involved were the housing and the Kiyomizu. The both of them were scaled with water techniques, but in different ways. The housing clan had the ability to manipulate water into living things, but it only worked well on plants. Many thought that the ability had given them to control directly plants, but that was not the case after all in Heroes in First Sight. He thought that it was a version of the Mokiton, but it was not. But in doing so, they were able to build boats, housing, and furniture. As for the Kiyomizu, they were able to harden their water to make any random opponent think that it was something other than water. They could make it solid without even having to freeze it like the Yuki clan. Excuse me, honorable representative. May I speak? The two immediately stopped as he turned towards him. The housing member melted out, but the Kiyamaisa looked more exhausted. I'm sorry that you had to come out here, Uzumaki-sama. I'm sure that you heard that we're having a bit of disagreement. My colleague here feel like the, hey, don't speak for me. You don't silence, said Naruto as they all went quiet. They pale as he turned to face him. He had no idea if they were civilians or shinobi, but they were giving him a damn headache. Before I asked if I could kindly speak, not if someone could speak for me. This time, however, I am speaking. Do I make myself clear? Board members nodded at his request. Since I hear that it's nearly been an hour and neither of you had been able to make a proper decision and the Terumi clan is unable to come to terms to their problem. Both of you know who I am and the best you're gonna get short from talking to the Hokage. So, I will be making a decision for you. The Kiyomaisu member was about to say something but Naruto gave him a look as he shut his mouth. Good, said Naruto. If you had said anything, I might have made this whole thing go to clan. Proceedings for about a month. And when your clan heads come to you asking you why it's taking so long, you'll have to explain why. As Naruto walked past him as he went over to where the building plan were, as Naruto pulled out two pieces of papers and slammed them down on the table, here are the original agreements written and signed by your respective clan heads. If there is any dispute regarding clan boundary lines, an agreement shall be met that will not inconvenience either clan. And after looking over the boundary lines, I can give you two options as a gesture for them to come over as the leader of the construction stood there as well. As Naruto point towards the first line. Now if I'm reading this correctly, the Kiyomaisu want this line. As the man nodded, very well, and that means the housing want the other line. As the other man nodded, here are your options. First, you can leave the lines as they are. Or secondly, you can take the era between the two specified lands and join your clan territory. How you want your intent build things, it will be up to your leader. Those are your two options, work together or go back to the original planning. It shouldn't be too hard to pick, but if this issue, make it way on my table once again. I will meet the other clans that arrive with you here. Pick your feet. As Boatman was pale, as Naruto looked towards the leader of the construction, give them a day to figure this out. I figure they will have to speak to their respective clan heads anyway. 
You and your man can have the rest of the day off. Report in tomorrow. The man smile and thank Naruto as he move off to make his workers know. As Naruto start to walk away, he's seen too many things like that in the past that would never get solved because neither side want to back down sometime. You had to give them the harsh approach. He felt his stomach. As he sighed, it was well past noon and he hadn't gotten anything to eat yet. Maybe there was a chance he could stop by the Uchiha district when he finished work to see if Mikato wanted to do something. As Naruto smelled ramen after a few minutes of walking, as his mouth started to water, as he was approaching the stand he saw someone red hair. As Kushina was the only person that he knew with bright red hair like that. Hey Ku! But before he could call out her name fully his hand was grabbed and he was pulled into one of the many alleyways. Shinobi instincts immediately kicked in as he tried to twirl out of the way but his back hit the stone wall as he was about to get out of the person's grass but his eyes landed on the person. Me? What, what are you doing? She still had a grip on his arm as she grabbed his other wrist. The look that she gave him was one that he had seen before but in the future, Naruto Sama, you were amazing back there. Back, back there? You mean with the representatives? Yes, me said. As she pursed herself near to him, Mason, what are this isn't right, he said. It isn't? Her voice sounded more amused than anything else. I know that you've been looking at me. You have a hard time being discreet. Can you imagine how sad I was? When I realized that you stopped looking at me for this past week, Naruto found himself gripping his teeth. Of course he stopped. He was with Mikado. As he wondered what happened to the shy girl that he had gotten to know, who had been helping him for weeks. If he was an act, damn, she was a good actress. Mason, you were with someone. I stopped looking, as you said, when I found out. Not only that, I'm with someone now. May snort a bit. That man asked me out. He thought I was a timid little girl, that he could show the ropes. Let's just say I show him a thing or two, when he tried to go further than I was willing. As for you being with someone, well, I want to prove I'm better. As Nurt gave her an incredulous look, there was more going on here than him and Mikato dating, and besides, he wasn't that kind of person. As she moved forward and captured his lips, as Naruto frowned, as she tried to use her tongue to enter his mouth, he reached to push her back but a wind of pain could be heard as Naruto blinked when he saw the nine tentacle of hair floating. It was Kushina. As he turned his head towards me who was rubbing her bruised cheek, Kushina had punched her right in the face. I heard everything. What are you doing to big brother Naruto said Kushina. May's eyes widened at that. Brother? I wasn't aware he had any siblings. Kushina here stopped waving about. Even though he couldn't see her face, her voice on its muck. I am Kushina Uzumaki. You might have heard of me by another name. As her voice dropped down to a growl. Kanoha, red hot habanero. Recognition dawned on me face. But she quickly replaced it with amusement. As me got up. She dropped into a stance that he recognized. It was one. That she dropped into when she was about to use her bloodline technique. Red hot you say. I wonder. Just how hot. As smoke started to escape from the side of her mouth. As Naruto felt Kushina and Karama Chakra spiking. Kushina Chen. Mason. Stop. Kushina turned towards him. With a brief look of upset. But brother she said. No buts. Stop. You too me. We don't need a scene. And you spitting out steam would definitely cause one. As Kushina neared her eyes at me. As she spat something to the side, a reddish brown glob, as it quickly turned black. She was further along in her love release than he realized. He thought that it hadn't fully manifested yet. Yes, he said, pushing as a matter sister. She was stopping you, because like I said, I'm seeing someone now. I said I was interested in you before. I knew that you were with someone else, but I stopped it immediately after. You always struck me as shy. So I was planning to get to know you as my assistant first, before I said anything else. But I guess life works out different, he said. Me frown. So you were interested in me before the other guy asked me out? Naruto nodded. Who are you with now, she asked. Uchiha Mikato, said Naruto. And Uchiha? Seriously? Instead of being angry or upset, or any other emotion that she should have shown, she grinned. I bet I can win you over from her. I know the Uchiha's are strong but she can't threaten me by copying my techniques and use them against me. You tell her that she now has Terumi me as her competition for the heart of Naruto-sama. As Naruto found himself gaping in disbelief, 
As Kushner spoke, Big Brother Yurik is already with Mikoto. You cannot interfere with that. May stuck her tongue out childishly. Who cares? In my opinion, he's not married. That makes him still available. As she looked towards Naruto the wink. See you tomorrow, Naruto Sama, she said. As she ran away. Well, I think I should warn Mikoto. What do you Naruto paused as Kushner was gone. Kushner? As Naruto sighed without tapping this age mode, he couldn't find her. And it would take him a while to trace down her signature. He just hoped that she didn't do anything stupid. As he remembered where he was, and his stomach grumbled. He put everything else aside as he made his way to get that lunch. The next morning, as Naruto was drumming his fingers on decks, a part of him was expecting this Hiruzen had gave him a scroll when he first arrived. But he was surprised and flattered. Hiruzen wanted him to take on a Jenny team, or apprentice someone very soon. Probably once the war officially started, seeing that Kanoha graduation period was approaching, because they knew that he was a powerhouse, he had shown Harrison and Danzo what he was capable of. Well, he did not go into sage mode or tap into tail beast mode, but he explained to Harrison what it meant to be a sage. Harrison already knew that though, because all three of his students knew about being sages. Apparently, Jerry was the only one attempting it. He had seen some results, but he has not fully become a sage yet. The snakes did not want to teach Urchimaru, but Urchimaru would not give up on the search. As for Snavi, she didn't really care about it, as Naruto wasn't surprised. After losing Dan and Nawaki, she didn't really care about much. It probably wouldn't be long before she left the village, with the next war on the horizon. Naruto wasn't sure who we will take the train, but he will have to look through the list then to see who were the current students. His thoughts were interrupted though when there was a knock on his door. Come in, he said. As a person entered, it was an envoy. Uzumaki sama. Hokage sama requests your presence as soon as possible. I'll be right there, said Naruto. As he closed his scroll, he picked himself up. As he wondered what he was needed for already, he was just there an hour ago. He would find us soon enough though as he made his way. When Naruto entered, his eyebrow raised. As it settled on Mikoto, who had turned the moment she heard the door open, she gave him a quick smile which he returned. As she then turned to face Hokage once again. But there were more people. Kagama was also there, along with Danzo talking quietly, and three other elderly men standing off to the side. As the elderly men looked like they were Uchiha's as well, here's a notice as he looked up. He cleared his throat. Naruto, thank you for being prompt. Naruto nodded as he moved towards the decks. You summoned me, Hokage sama, he said. As here's a lips twitched up a bit into a small smirk, but he forced it back down. It was a little inside joke. As Naruto enjoyed the reaction, seeing that Hirzen wanted to hand the hat over to him right now. As Hirzen gave Naruto the slip of paper that he had in his hand, I had a petition lined on my desk this morning. Since you're a part of it, I brought you here. As Naruto looked over the piece of paper, as it was very clear, the Uchiha clan wanted to move forward with a marriage between Uchiha Mikoto and Naruto Uzumaki. As Naruto realized that this was actually going to happen, it was not some dream. As he wondered what happened yesterday, it was because of me, probably, that accelerated this. He nodded as he handed the paper back to Hukagi. You need me here for the discussion. Yes, Kagamai said Jerson, as Kagamai stepped forward. I swear, I did not see this coming when we were here, almost a year ago, Jerson. Of course not. I didn't think anyone did. As Jerson's eyes looked over to the other three Uchiha men, as Kagamai looked towards Jerson with a knowing look, Regardless of the viewpoint expressed from the members of our council, everyone can agree that Naruto Uzumaki is not born of Uchiha blood, but he meets any requirements that will be placed on Suter for my daughter. Though he does not have the Sharingan he has proven his capability in battle, having single-handedly defeat the Sanbai Jinjuliki, Kagamai was making it known, well, how impressive he was, but only if they actually knew what he was capable of. He has also proved his abilities at diplomacy and management, being able to bring several different bloodlines within Kanoha, as well as assisting in getting them into the village proper. This has brought many new opportunities to both our village and allies, making our enemies reconsider any plans they may have tried to use against us in this time of instability. It is for this reason we wish for a bond in between Anuchia and Uzumaki. Our main request as he looked towards Naruto is that we wish for you, the suitor, to take the Uchiha name. The reason why we're here in front of the Hokage is because we need 
his permission since there is only two named Uzumaki's left in the village. In the absence of clan leadership, Okage-sama has final say. As Naruto hadn't heard about this before, it was a bit to lose the name that he had since birth, but something else concerned him. What does this mean for Kushina, he said. Technically, nothing, Harrison said. Before I release you from my service, Kushina would have already been the last of the Uzumakis in the village. It simply meant according to village law. She would be required to keep her last name when married and give it to her son and daughter. Kagamai then continued after the Hukagi, though we're willing to let any of your children that does not activate the Sharingan after they turn 15 or a second son or daughter take the name Uzumaki as well. That is if you desire it. A question popped in Zafnurta's head. What if they match activated after 15 and they already change their name? As Naruto noticed Kagamai's eyes went over to the other Uchiyas who hadn't said a word yet before returning back to him. I will say that we'll cross that bridge if we come to it. If we ever do. In all of our history, no one has ever activated the Sharingan after puberty. Should something happen, I believe we can let them remain Uzumaki, keeping our ties close to the clan. Though, I would hope that you listen to the clan advisors regarding what they have to say if the situation arrives. As Naruto turned his eyes towards the three other Uchiha men, as Naruto gave a nod, the one in the center nodded back. Seems like he was one that he'll be dealing with. As Naruto turned back to Harrison, I have no issue with the request. The only thing left is for you to accept Naruto. As he stamped the scroll, he turned it and pushed it over towards Naruto so he could read it. As Naruto picked it up and started to read, a million things flashed through his mind right here and then. As he realized that nothing will be the same, he was a bit jittery as he thought that the Itachi and Sasuke that he knew would never exist. But by taking this step, he will make the Uchiha's remain alive and make Kano as strong as ever. It was perhaps what Itachi would have wanted and gladly give his life for. And the misery to put him through that twice having killed the rest of his clan once again. But what for Sasuke? Well, once him and Sasuke had their sixth and final fight, he had given up on understanding what Sasuke really wanted. Then there was Migato. He was sad that he never got to know her in his own time. But the same go for his own parents. But getting to know them now was better than putting a thought in his head of what they were like. And Mikato, she was right in the middle of everything. She was not too over bossy or arrogant and she was not too shy either. At least if she was angry at you or upset and didn't want to talk to you, she would tell you why. She wouldn't just huff and just walk away. Unlike many other Uchiha's who were too much arrogant, she had brought him lunch after he had told Kushina and Minato about the two of them she brought him ramen he had a lot of work to do she had spent the time around there and just hanging out with him and it was nice she told him that the day that she spent with him was many more time better than any of the other time she shared with Fukaku as a man never spoke to her like this or even laugh and open up with her as his eyes reached the bottom of the contract he saw something we have to get married in a month doesn't it seem rather, I don't know, sudden? Is that a problem? You're essentially taking the place of Fukaku. We even add a bit of extra time otherwise. It would have been happening in two weeks to Kagamai. Oh no problem. Just didn't think I'll be getting married so soon. It's a bit of a wake up call, that's all. Kagamai shifted over to him. I'm sure that Mikato will do everything in her power to help you prepare. As Naruto turned towards Mikato who was looking down. She looked like she was embarrassed. Or perhaps she was not looking at him so... She wouldn't try to guilt him into anything. Or perhaps she heard some rumors yesterday. He could find out later. As he grabbed the brush and signed it. He then handed it back to Harrison. As Mikato grabbed his hand. And she pressed herself a bit close to him. He was a bit surprised by her action in front of everyone. But he didn't say anything. Naruto. I will let you and Mikato have the rest of the day to yourself. I think there's a lot of things that you should tell her. About your work. Yes, Hokage-sama. Do you need me for anything before we go? Said Naruto. Harrison shook his head as Mikato told him that she won't talk to her father for a minute. She would meet him by the entrance as he nodded. As it was time to tell her, as he went over his mind how to tell her about it, as Naruto brought her to what is old stomping grounds, well, they were gonna be someday. Training ground 7. It did look like you remember, but there was no training post there. The afternoon sun was glaring down on them as Naruto brought her over to a shading tree as they both sat down. I wonder where I should begin telling you about everything. She took his hand 
The beginning is usually a good place, or so I've heard. Yeah, he said, but it's a real long story. And it will probably take a couple of days to tell it all. I'm going to have to sum up a lot of things, and clarify over time. Hmm? What have you done that would have taken that long to explain, she said. Well, technically, my beginning doesn't happen for at least seven years from now. I was born after the Third Shinobi War. That will be starting up in a few months. He wasn't sure if he should keep on going or wait until she says something. So far she was just looking at him without blinking. When she didn't comment or open her mouth to speak, he pressed on. I was born on October 10th. The same night the Kayubi was ripped from my mother. The process killed her and to keep it from rampaging through the village. My father sealed it back inside me. Mikato's eyes were wide. As Naruto could only offer a sad smile. My parents in the future are Kushina Uzumaki and Minato Namikaze. They died the night I was born, and the KB was sealed inside of me, he said. It seems like his loss of his parents over power. What he just said to her, as she crashed right into him with a hug. I'm sorry, she said, as she held on to him tight. As she could hear the pain in his voice when he spoke about them. It took a while for her to lean up, as she was half sitting on him. I know that this is a lot, said Naruto, and that you might not even believe me. It's hard to take in. Yes, it's quite a lot, she said. Despite everything, she kept her composure. But I guess the Hokage believe you, otherwise, you wouldn't be doing what you're doing right now. Yes, yeah, said Naruto. I told him all the things that would happen, that have already come through, and tried to manipulate things so that it could turn to our advantage. All the clans from Kiri, they never came to Konoha in my time. I see, she said. As her lips turned into a frown. Have you already manipulated me? She asked. She was a little surprised how intense his fear came. I have done nothing that you haven't already wanted me to do, he said. I've already promised. Nothing I knew or done would harm Uchiha clan anyway. And that obviously includes you. Honestly, I only saw you two or three times. That I can remember. What? I wasn't leader of the clan anymore, she said. I'm guessing I married Fukaku after all. She said, shivering slightly. As Nurta could see that she didn't look pleased about that. Yes. You and Fukaku got married. You had two sons, Itachi and Sasuke. As she leaned up. As she heard that she had two sons. Can you tell me about them, she said. But she saw the light in Nurta's eye dim a bit. Naruto, what happened to my sons, she said. Itachi was a genius. Sasuke was as well in his own way. Unfortunately, some stuff happened that made things go. Badly for the both of them. I'm not sure it's a good idea for me to say anything. Are you sure that you really want to know, he said. She nodded. As their mother, one way or another. I believe I have that right, she said. A part of him wanted to refuse, after all they were the children. Of an alternate Mikato. At least that was the way that he started to think of her. Technically, she had no claim. But he resigned himself to telling her the history from the beginning. In order for me to make you understand what happened. I have to go back a bit. After the key was released from my mother. A lot of people started to distrust the Uchiha clan. Those who tried to subdue the Biju saw that its eyes were dull under the influence of the Sharingan. Even though many Uchiha's lost their life that night protecting people, people still want to place blame. The Uchiha clan, as I'm sure that you know, has always kept itself apart from the village. As Naruto saw she start to pale a bit, this didn't help and it only got worse with time. I don't know what would have happened if the fort was still alive. But with the third back in power, things began to slide backwards. Not that it was Sarto Bijiji's fault, but I think that by the time he got back in power, the situation already take root. As Mikato listened, as Naruto explained the cool plot, she had a hard time believe that she would take part in, or even condone. But since Naruto did not know her from his time, he did not know her mindset at all. In order to keep the peace, Sarto tried to start a peace talk with the clan. I don't know what happened with that. All I know is, at 13 years old, Itachi offered to kill his entire clan. Mikoto eyes widened at it as her hand came over her mouth, as she gasped, looking her to eyes, show her that he had did it, as she couldn't believe it. But guys, the end up right here. If you want to see the next person do, like, subscribe, comment down below, and turn on that bell notification to stay posted. Remember, share all of your friends and social media platform. And also, guys, remember to stay in tune for the episodes coming over and making and making three. 
If you're new, yes, you heard that correctly, I did have 3 channels, and making and making 2 and making 3, which I post what if on every single day for you guys to enjoy, so yeah, without further ado, I'm all for now, see you over there, peace.